We have Eric Williams with us, who's a solutions architect with HID. Um, and he's gonna talk about how to build a comprehensive security strategy around FIDO2. So I love this topic because I'm sort of like, I come from the smart card world and, and physical access control, you know, is always, it was always like a big topic. Um, we don't talk about that a lot within FIDO Alliance. So it's really interesting to hear uh, a session on like how to build, you know, logical and physical access together, which is, you know, a really important topic for a lot of companies. So let me hand it over to Eric and uh, he'll take it away. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for coming to my session. Um, as you heard, my name is Eric Williams. I am uh, a pre-sales engineer or solutions architect with HID Global. And what that means is that I work with uh, the sales team, um, with the sales process to um, kind of get the sale across the line, I guess you could say. And um, as part of that, I get a lot of exposure to different scenarios um, out, in the, out in the field. So it's, it's actually quite an interesting position. I've been with the company now uh, since January of 2017, so almost five years. And um, yeah, that's about it. Let me tell you a little bit um, about what my session is about. So it is about you know, thinking outside of the box. I know you've heard a lot about FIDO this week. Um, and I'm not gonna talk very much about FIDO to be honest, except for I'll tell you that we have devices that uh, contain a FIDO applet and can be used for authentication. But I want to then kind of shift and talk a bit more about some of uh, the other technologies that are out there. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about HID Global. Probably um, everyone knows HID uh, in some way. Um, we are very large in physical security. So if you're using a badge to get into your door at uh, your offices, when we used to go to offices at least, <laughs> then um, that is quite possibly an HID uh, card because our, our market penetration is, is quite huge. Um, but HID has been in the uh, logical access space uh, since about, well, for about 12 years, I think, we acquired a company called Active Identity. And with that, we uh, came out with smart cards and authentication software and management software and that sort of thing. So we've been in the game for a long time and um, our portfolio keeps um, kind of improving. Um, and we, we, we uh, are a company that uh, is in the, um, well, we always look out for opportunities and we acquire smaller companies. Um, so one of those companies was a company called Crossmatch. I'm not gonna talk too much about them today because it's not uh, really centered around um, um, that particular product. Um, but with that, we got some really interesting biometric technologies and also some uh, authentication uh, software. So the agenda, I guess it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna talk uh, about an overview of the enterprise ecosystem quickly and then uh, talk about uh, what the authentication options are. And honestly, this is kind of all focused around uh, the credentials that we offer. So there are other things, you know, there's software platforms out there to do authentication, you know, connect to uh, federated entities and things like that. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about that. If not because I don't understand that stuff, but you know we can only cover so much. So I'm going to focus on the products and the services that we offer. Um, we're gonna take a holistic view of the credential technologies that are contained in the devices that, that we sell. Um, and then I think it gets a little bit more fun. I'll talk about some real world examples and then I'll kind of close things out with things to consider. <clears throat> Okay, so this is a very sim simple uh, depiction of the enterprise ecosystem uh, from the credential aspect. <laughs> so in this uh, case, you see we put credentials right smack dab in the middle and everything else kind of um, um, revolved around it. Um, one of the uh, areas, as I mentioned, we're in the uh, physical access card space that we've combined with the logical technologies. So um, the logical access you see there in the orange um, is, is really you know, the primary use case that my particular business unit is involved in. However, we do also cover uh, physical. 
Um, and there's also a management component. Actually, one of the things that's interesting about our particular uh, FIDO devices is that we offer a device where uh, there is a shared applet between the key, uh, between the uh, PKI and, and the uh, FIDO. So that means you can do management using our CMS system. Um, you can, you know, stand up a self-service portal and you get a bit more management than you do with, um, you know, without, without this sort of platform. Um, so here is a view of the enterprise uh, ecosystem as far as authentication is, is uh, concerned. You've got your federated applications, um, you've got OS logon, and we handle that again in a few different ways um, from uh, PKI to FIDO, but also some of our other authentication uh, applications. Um, then there are your on-prem apps, your secure print. I'll talk about secure print uh, a little bit more when I go into some of the examples. And of course, there's digitally signing uh, and encrypting documents and emails. I kind of put those in the same bucket. Um, that's still primarily the domain of PKI. But I think FIDO is starting to encroach upon that a little bit. <clears throat> Then there's network equipment and remote access. I kind of bundled those together, but they're really quite different. And the network equipment is still uh, very much the domain of uh, RADIUS uh, protocol in a lot of cases. Um, and the remote access is uh, kind of different. They've really started to um, kind of embrace other technologies. And in fact, um, we had a, uh, we recorded a, 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 um, um, a demo uh, and a blog with Citrix last week. So if you go to their um, to their YouTube channel, you'll see that uh, we they, they interviewed us and and we put a little demo together showing that in their technology preview now you can enable FIDO tokens. So that's something new for them. Um, then it's regulations and mandates. I kind of put that in there, even though we're not, that has nothing to do directly with authentication, but that's, simply, that's uh, certainly going to drive uh, your authentication needs and your MFA. And then, as I mentioned, uh, physical access. So uh, that, for us, that's very important. So there are a couple of things uh, that I would like to kind of focus on for you to consider. Um, first of all, um, I don't think we talk enough about user experience. So I dropped the UX in there. Um, and then the other one is, you know, kind of the obvious one, how, you know, how, how well does this secure my systems? So I think between those two, you need to find that balance. And if you do, then you really have a, a winning combination. If you implement a security strategy or an authentication strategy and you are not considering the uh, user experience, you're going to run into problems because they will find ways to circumvent your protocols, right? Or, um, you know, they'll just be unhappy, which is not good. Um, then there are some other considerations, you know, the location of your users. These days, um, everyone has a mix of, of uh, you know, in office and at home, or maybe you're almost entirely uh, out of the office these days and working remotely. Um, you have to really understand which applications you have and, um, you know, how to best uh, um, implement authentic your, your authentication methods. And I mentioned uh, regulations. Um, there are a few things to consider here, including, um, you know, first of all, there's government mandates. Sometimes there's state and local, um, and all of that is going to impact what you uh, decide to implement. Um, and you may want to consider whether it's, that's even enough. Um, sometimes just following mandates is, is just good enough, and you might want to try to uh, improve upon that. And then, of course, uh, growth plans to consider. Are there going to be any mergers or acquisitions? Uh, you, you, do you have a, you know, a, a hiring um, plan in place where you're going to, to grow quickly? That sort of thing. 
Okay, so here is my holistic view or kind of the HID uh, holistic view of authentication when it comes to the cards and the keys. Um, I didn't put FIDO on there, but that's kind of the obvious one. Um, so really the top row should have five tiles. Um, so of course it's FIDO and then there's PKI. PKI is still, um, you know, it's difficult to implement and it's not that easy to manage, but it's still considered one of the strongest uh, methods of, of authentication out there. Um, almost every large company that I speak to, um, when I get to their CISO, um, I find that he's an ex-military guy and he's really, you know, trumpeting the use of PKI for, for, you know, if not for everyone, but at least in certain use cases. So I don't think that's going to go away in any um, short period of time. Um, then there's Oath. Um, Oath is still quite a useful um, um, protocol um, used for OTP, if you don't know that. Um, either time-based or event-based, and you'll, uh, well, I'll talk about tokens in a minute, but um, you, these can be hardware tokens, which are very durable, which is a good thing. Um, you can pretty much, oh, I was talking to someone at the show uh, yesterday that uh, told me about how a particular business, I think it was the Russians, and <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they put the, the tokens that they were testing through uh, tests where they would run it over with a car or put it in boiling water and things like that. So <laughs> um, I don't think our spec sheet says it will survive those things, <laughs> but apparently, uh, you know, they're pretty tough. Okay, then there are these physical access technologies. I mentioned that the card, and I'll show it to you. Um, this is our C2300 card. It contains a, a FIDO uh, applet that's contact and contactless. Um, it has PKI that's contact and contactless, but where this all really comes together is that you can use it at the door um, and have a single credential for your physical and your logical access. So we support all the major protocols for HID. This is kind of where we made our bones. Um, CIOS, MyFair, uh, iClass, EV1, so forth and so on. Um, so all of those technologies, whatever you have out there, can be on the card. And um, what's also important, and I'll talk about this when I go into some of the verticals, is that that card is also your visual identity in a lot of cases. Um, so down below, I'll go really quick. Cards I mentioned and even showed you, um, tokens can um, contain most of those technologies. We don't have uh, physical access at this time. I know some of our competitors do, so that's something we're looking at. Um, and tokens, and then of course, there's other authenticators that uh, we probably won't cover too much today. All right, so let's look at some real world examples. Um, I, what I did was break down um, some of these examples into, um, uh, or to, to focus them around a particular vertical, uh, list the regulation and the mandate for each of them, and then uh, kind of the requirements and then also how the uh, user experience is going to affect them. And then, you know, what's, what's the best um, product based upon those, those uh, variables. So in healthcare, there is a regulation called HIPAA. You probably all have heard about it. Um, really important for protecting patient data. And um, the way that a practitioner uh, will use authentication in a lot of cases um, when they go from exam room to exam room is that they use uh, typically a card uh, that they can tap um, onto a reader and then tap again to lock or sometimes to remove it and it will auto lock. And the reason for that auto lock is because HIPAA has um, a, um, a part of the HIPAA, HIPAA regulation is that you cannot leave that computer unsecured. So you can imagine this is pretty useful in, a, in just about any case, um, but it's, it's really part of the mandate for HIPAA. Um, so uh, they also utilize roaming profiles so that you know, the, um, the, the practitioner will log in on one workstation and they, that will follow them around to another workstation. And for, from the user experience, you need to consider uh, a couple of things. For example, you know, accommodating for the gear that they're wearing. So fingerprints don't always work for them very well and facial recognition. 
So the next one I want to talk about is uh, government, and I kind of uh, uh, looped energy into that as well because they're, to me their mandates are kind of similar. Um, and in fact, I think the power companies generally will follow the NIST regulations. Um, so some of the <clears throat> sorry, requirements are um, for compliant, uh, they need to follow uh, NIST regulations to be tamper evident. And that is now kind of coming over to the FIDO side for some credentials. Um, a couple of years ago, that was an, a big issue. Um, so we're starting to see that more. Um, and credential management is often very important. So they want to have that control where they can uh, enable accounts and disable accounts and that sort of thing, or give access and, and remove access. And that's something that FIDO doesn't quite have yet. Um, FIDO is very kind of one-to-one. Um, credentials are stored in the uh, TPM of a, of a, of a uh, workstation. So um, I know some of the vendors here are working on some solutions around that. So if you are, I get it. Um, but uh, Pure FIDO doesn't really do that. Um, and from the uh, user side, they just want something durable. So for financial services, we work with a lot of um, banks. We work with a lot of large insurance companies. And um, around uh, banks, there is a payment card standard called PCI DSS. So anyone who transacts um, credit cards, basically, uh, need to follow a certain regulations. Um, and of course, that's not secluded to financial institutions. It's really anyone that processes transactions or handles credit cards, really. Um, so what's kind of important for them in a lot of cases is VPN and uh, remote systems and also secure print. I told you I'd, I'd, I'd get to that. And secure print, if you don't know, is um, the process of kind of uh, storing the print uh, job in the printer until it's released. So from the user experience, um, if you're printing you know, a financial document and you don't want other people to see it, um, what you would do is uh, print your document and then go to the printer and then tap your card on a reader and then it would release your job. Um, so from the user experience, a lot of times they're just looking for cross-system versatility. And what I mean by that is that um, they don't want to have a lot of different credentials or a lot of different authentication methods. If they can find a single way to get into everything, uh, that really um, pleases the users. Okay, and a couple of more. I want to talk a little bit about law enforcement. Um, we deal with a lot of uh, police organizations around the country, and uh, they have a regulation called CGIS that they need to adhere to. It's fairly new, and a lot of uh, the organizations are just starting to um, uh, um, adhere to the mandate. Um, but the uh, requirement is that they need to have a, a rugged um, solutions. In fact, you know, in their patrol cars, they have what they call an MDT or, or an MDC, a mobile data computer or terminal, depending on who you ask. And it's a ruggedized laptop that they're using to look up criminal data and get into databases and things like that. Um, so they're kind of in their patrol cars uh, very quickly in and out sometimes. So they want that auto lock feature um, when they can get it. Um, and that's really what they're looking for from a user experience. Um, the policemen do not want to kind of have to sit there and type a password um, when they're in an emergency situation. So fast login is very important for them. And then in aviation, we have something called the Cyber, an Aviation Cyber Initiative. And um, I spoke a little bit earlier about visual identification. And um, this is uh, one uh, vertical where it is extremely important. Um, you'll notice if you ever see someone wearing ID in, in an airport, it has lots of different information. It's, just, it's not just the uh, face. And it's not just the ID number and the name. Um, they use a lot of different codes so that if you enter a secure area, you know maybe that red badge um, will get you, get you there and someone can very easily tell that you're supposed to be there. Um, for uh, hospitals, they uh, have uh, similar protocols in place. You know, to get into a maternity ward, for example, they may use a particular color. Um, 
they are looking for kind of, they, they process a lot of identities there um, because in an airport you're working with contractors and you're working with vendors. So they really like easy issuance and um, a, a replacement model is also kind of easy. So in a lot of cases, uh, the card works really well there. Um, starting to see a bit of inroads though for FIDO, but probably not for the majority of the, of the workers. Um, then, of course, there are others. There's um, stored value, um, and these are other uses for the card. Stored value, time and attendance, and so forth and so on. Um, yeah. So, a couple of things to consider. Um, thoroughly understand your system. Um, identify the root problems. Consider regulations and compliance, and I think, as I mentioned, UX is very important. You always want to consider that, and you want to make sure you implement the right technologies for the right jobs. Um, I thought I would uh, take a little bit of a tangent, um, since I got a couple of minutes left, and then uh, talk about understanding your systems. Um, in my previous life, I used to work as an IT director um, for a hotel in Hong Kong, actually. It was very interesting. But when I got there, I found that, you know, first of all, I learned a little something about computer systems in hotels, and you might find this interesting, because they have what they call a PMS, it's a property management system. And then this PMS is where all the reservations are kept, and you know, when they hit the check-in button, the check-out button, they're connecting to that PMS. And when they do that, it uh, sends a message, an XML message to an interface machine. And let's say upon check-in, um, that, inter that message will go to the interface machine and it'll send it out to your PBX, to the POS systems, to your HVAC, to your entertainment systems, and it may say, okay, turn the TV on, put on CNN, well, most hotels don't do this, but we were kind of advanced, <laughs> put on CNN, uh, the, the uh, guest's favorite uh, or uh, lang native language is Cantonese, you know, that sort of thing. Um, uh, it, will it will enable uh, a long distance calling on the PBX system and so forth. Um, so the thing about that though is that uh, no one, when I started, really knew how all these systems <laughs> work together. And that's really the simplistic view because sometimes they would cascade and jump to other systems. Um, so one of the first things I did was sat down and spoke to all of the you know, separate people and, and made a, uh, a, a data flow map, just so I understood very clearly what the effects were. And I guess how that kind of relates back to authentication is that you, know, you really need to understand all of the authentication uh, methods that you're putting in place. Um, otherwise, it's very easy to kind of break something inadvertently. Just ask uh, Facebook. <laughs> they just had a big outage because they didn't understand uh, the effect of one of their changes. And that's my time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Eric? All right, well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.